In earlier videos we calculated the amount of C14 dates per canton. So in that situation we already kind of talked about densities of data. And in this video I would like to introduce to you uh, the heat maps, which are a very good tool to uh, visualize densities um, that are not specifically bound to some um, territories, but densities over larger and continuous areas of space. So heat maps, you probably know if you watch football, uh, that is often the visualization where players are most active in the field. So uh, you probably have seen in the TV already kind of this representation of a heat map. But this also can be applied to archaeological situations where you, for example, like to see where most of the sites are uh, displayed. And this is particularly helpful if you have very many uh, points um, and overlapping points so that you can't see actually uh, where the most points are. Um, so heat maps are actually a tool that are based on something that's called kernel density estimation. And since this is the um, video or the videos here are more concerned on the technical part, I will not go too much into detail here. but. Basically, um, it is kind of blurring technique. So where we have the point that is the reference of um, the blurring, and around that, the um, not only the point is registered later, but uh, around the point, a blurred um, signal is calculated. So we're using the point as middle point, and from that onward, uh, the um, a value is calculated over a certain bandwidth. So here is the bandwidth and within that we have usually decreasing values in relation to the distance from the point. And this is the two-day representation uh, but of course you can also do that in a uh, kind of 3D situ situation. So we have here the point and not only is the density falling to the left and to the right of the point but in a circular fashion. And if we combine several of these points we get overlapping densities and here the values are added up. So the more points we have in the vicinity the more the higher will be the values here between the points. And the resulting um, layer is most of the time a vector layer, uh, pardon, a raster layer, um, where here are some pixels and the values within that pixel are represented then as kind of a graphical uh, representation as a raster. How can we do that in QGIS? And or first some, some things that we have to consider. Um, selection of bandwidth and selection of the final resolution. So you have uh, on one hand usually to select how big the search area around a point should be how big this kind of hill is around the reference point, so this bandwidth here. And for the final um, raster, you also have to select what is the resolution of the final raster. And you can see here some examples how this might affect the resulting um, heat map. So if we have a very small bandwidth, then we have only small um, areas around the point that are um, affected. Well, if we have a large bandwidth, then usually we get a more homogeneous um, picture. And there are some um, rules of thumb how we can calculate the bandwidth, but most of the time it's more easy to just inspect the result um, visually and look how which kind of uh, kernel density estimation or heat map bandwidth is working best. And with respect to resolution, the more, the higher the resolution of the final raster will be, the finer also the result will be, but this comes at the cost of more um, data, so it is uh, more, um, you need more uh, memory to store the data, but also processing time will increase 
and quite dramatically so you should try to um, select a resolution that fits your needs and is not higher in higher resolution than you in the end will need this okay let's really jump in and see how we can do that in QGIS and the tool here for heat map is not visible in the menu but we have to use the toolbox again I will show you how this works so here is my QGIS and I've already loaded the C14 data over which we would like to produce a heat map and I've added a background layer so that we can evaluate the results better so as I said here we have at first to open the toolbox using this cogwheel symbol and there we can just search for heat map and we'll find the tool under interpolation if I double click that first thing I have to do is to select the point layer over which the heat map should be produced in that case in this case here it's quite simple because we have only one point layer but you if you have more point layers you might need to select the right one then we have to decide on the bandwidth or here it's called the radius and this is given in um, map units so here we're working on the EPSG 2056 the Swiss National Coordinate System which is in meters it's a projected coordinate system and here the uh, heat map will work quite fine um, it is really the best to use projected um, projection system coordinate system here for example uh, the Swiss National if you're working around Switzerland or for example UTM if you work on larger areas our bandwidth here so we kind of have a Europe-wide distribution here so our bandwidth should be more than 100 meters if we would use this default value we would have uh, kernels that would be smaller than the points that we are now seeing so I would suggest that we use um, 100 kilometers actually and this should give us uh, a nice um, result also we have to decide the raster output size so that's the resolution and you can either say how big uh, a pixel should be or select the number of rows and columns in the final uh, raster most of the time that's that's more easy because you probably know how large uh, the resulting raster should be so I select here 1000 rows and automatically the number of columns is calculated and also this pixel width um, so the resolution here if you have already a fixed resolution that you would like to aim for you can enter that here now we have some optional uh, parameters here or advanced parameters one is that you can uh, get the radius or the bandwidth from fields within the um, attribute table uh, so you could have an individual radius for each individual point and also you can use a weight here so let me switch shortly back to the presentation um, this weight uh, defines how big the final um, hill here the final curve will be so the smaller it is the smaller the number of um, or the smaller the values will result from this individual point and uh, you could do that for individual points here from the um, attribute table at the moment we don't need to set this here so we we'll just leave it like that then we can look or use different kernels I would suggest if you are interested in the uh, different kernel possibilities you look into the QJS manual most of the time you want this biquadratic uh, kernel that is more or less the Gaussian curve and for some kernels you have to also define a decay ratio that means how fast the kernel will drop and also you can define if the output values should be scaled to uh, to a common um, scaling factor of one or just use the raw values most of the time also here raw values are just fine 
And the usual thing, if we would like to have that in temporary folder, that's fine for us. And if we would like to open that after a successful uh, execution, also this we leave like that. So the only thing I change here is the radius and the resolution. And I just ignored all these advanced parameters and I can click on start. Now it's calculating and I can close that down. And when the algorithm has finally run, you can see here this black blob of uh, resulting estimation. And where it's lighter, this means there are more C14 dates or more points here in our layer. And you can see that more easily if I move the points on top. So here is really a cluster of points and that is visualized with the lighter color. But this black and white display is probably not so convenient, so you might like to change that. To do so, we click on with the right mouse button on heat map and select properties. And here under symbology, we can change from one channel gray to one channel pseudo color. So with that, we give the individual values a different color and you could use different um, different color ramps. Um, this default is quite good because here light means less values, red means a lot of values, but magma for example might also work so you could try that out. I click on classify, I click on apply and now you can see, whoops, sorry, I can see here in the back, if I click on OK, now the colors are presenting the amount of uh, points much better. To go even further, so currently our uh, heat map is really uh, overlaying the background map. That might be not so convenient, so we also can change that and add a bit of transparency. So for example, that, that we have uh, only an opacity of 60%. If I now click on OK, you can see that the background map is, visual, is, is visible through the heat map layer. And with that, I think we have quite a nice heat map that shows the density of our points quite well and give us an overview about the distribution of these individual points. We already can see here in this data set that we have um, some structures in that which comes quite good out of the representation of the heat map. And in the next video we would like to I would like to show you how you can estimate if these points here are clustered or regular spaced or random spaced with a mathematical procedure.